Okay, so when you buy it, when you buy, so you, you buy one of these different, so here, so here's the diamond one I bought. This was $50,000 I put into this. And then I also bought a $500 silver one. But then for the people that went in and, and bought different things, I bought these four gold packages that I'm going to give away once we're able to transfer this stuff, right? And so you go into these loot boxes here. And so there's a entry price, bronze, silver, there's different tiers, right? And different tiers will give you different things, right? So like this gold tier of a thousand bucks will give you two bronze NFTs, two silver NFTs, and two gold NFTs, right? And so really what it is, is it's a game that comes up. And so they're really focusing on football in, in the, in the United, in, in Europe, right? Soccer is big all around the world. NFL, MLB, NBA, all the biggest things you can think of. And then this is like pop stars and all this kind of stuff, right? You can actually go into the NFTs and here, like I'll show you the, like the top sold ones right here. So these are the top ones people bought out. Oh, hold on. that's not top sold, top sold. Let me just show you. So you're basically, you're buying loot boxes so you can buy some of these NFTs, right? So you click on, let's say Tom Brady. And so they have diamond card, platinum card, gold card, and bronze card and silver card, right? And so each one of these NFTs, if somebody is playing the game, right? And let's say they, they're wanting Tom Brady history, right? So they're gonna get 10 questions in 10 seconds. It was Tom Brady born in this year. Yes, you swipe left, I think for no and right for yes. So they, they kind of brought in the whole swipe left, swipe right thing for the dating apps. They wanted it, you know, people to be using this. So there's going to be things in the game that you're going to be able to buy. Like any game has that you can stop the clock. You can get hints, you can Google things, but each time you do that, it costs a little bit of money, right? And so let's say it's a dollar, right? And then, so if you own the NFT and the person's playing the game, right? And they pause it and they buy something in game on your NFT, right? That is going to give you 10%, I think five or 10%. I have to ask Shelly, which one is it? Five or 10% of whatever they buy. So let's say over the course of a month, you own Tom Brady here, a platinum card, right? And, you know, over the course of that, of that, of that month, you know, 10,000 people played the game and used or 10,000 people played the Tom Brady card. And there was a thousand dollars charged, you know, with people adding things onto the game with Tom Brady. You would then get a percentage of, of the fees generated from that. So if it's a, if it's a dollar being generated, let's say it was, you know, five cents, let's say it's only 5%. You get, you'd get five cents every time somebody, you know, played that card or did something with that. Right. There's also stuff for advertising and all kinds of stuff that you can get into. But what you really want is these loot pool tokens. And Shelly's going to get into this because they made another loot pool since we actually last got into it. But loot pool is going to give you like advertising and revenue sharing on Super One, which is actually super beneficial. And so you're going to be able to like, let's say the person's playing the free version. Every time they go to play, there's going to be an ad that pops up, right? Whether it's Coca-Cola or whatever it is, FIFA, whatever the ad is. And you'd be able to get a percentage of, of, of ad revenue generated every time somebody watches that ad particularly on your card so it, it is a little confusing there is like several parts to it but you know right now the diamond which is out of a lot of people's hands it gives you 10 nfts when i bought this i got i think 15 nfts or 16 nfts i got three three 15 nfts and then same tokens and then and then it has 40 percent bonus tokens 40 percent staking and so this just have different reward levels but let's get into let's get into their their discussion and what they what they what they what they did and what they said in this meeting and then we can get into more of it i did an ama with super one two months ago and there's a lot of good information that i'm going over right now with the founder there i i'd say maybe we can go back and watch that but let's let's watch this is the update from them this was done recently so i'm gonna start this here i'm, not, I'm gonna i'm gonna he talks a the little slow. so okay so the founder is on the top right town hall realized. Here, let's just get into this here. On a lot of private deals, and we are really staging this company. At the same time, we must say that it has been a very, uh, how should I say, turmoil over the past six months in the market. I mean, we had the, the sort of January dip, and then came the Ukrainian invasion. Then we have all the crypto that's in, infl in inflate. Hold on. Things we're going to do. And Amin will be hosting the gaming section, okay. and I will be hosting all those sections but i will bring in in the creator we will bring in quite a few people there's a lot of people that work for the uh, company that to... are going to talk on this too so which is kind of cool all right but here let's get to the many game. people think that we just have one game 
And that's kind of a starting point when people ask, okay, when is the game launching? We're going to answer all these questions, by the way, today. We got basically two questions. When is the game launching? When is the token listing? We're going to so we thought the game was going to launch in like November, December time. They're trying to launch the game next month, just so you answer we talked about today. It. So we, that's why we, we, we will not have a lot of questions related to that. So the game is the most important part of what we're doing. We are a game company, a gamification company. And now we, we are taking it to a even better level than we have done before. And we, we're going to get started and we're going to see what, what the game is all about. It's to empower billions of sports and entertainment fans all over the world to share their passion and to connect and to play and ha have real fun. That's what we're doing with the game. We are taking a position in the market that has not been fulfilled. It's a void space. And we are doing that with our game that you know very well. That's the core gaming mechanics of what we do. The swiping left or right, and that keeps going. That, that's still the, the thing. We, have, we are doing this within the sports. And that they're okay, so in, on top of each one of these guys, like with Manchester United, there's 600 million fans in, in, in Manchester United. There's 500 million Liverpool fans, 450 million. You get the, you get the point. There's a lot of people out there that, that want to play this game because they can play it for free and still make money. So let me play it for you. We have an initial big focus on football. I will get back to that. And we also have other sports coming and we have the entertainment sector. So all these are our content sort of. That, that's the content, that's the, that's the fandoms, that's the passion we are approaching with the game the concept we have. So the game consists of multiple sections or multiple sort of segments. At the very center, you have the game mechanics. That's all the technology, the platform that makes it playable. It's the algorithms we create, it's the rules that we have. It's all the things that's more or less beneath the surface. You don't see it, that's what makes the game. It's the code base, it's everything. Then you have all the content, which is uh, the key word for game mechanics. It needs to be playable. And by playable, it needs to be exciting, it needs to be uh, good, and it needs to be achievable it needs to be that there is a balance it can't be too difficult and can't be too easy when it comes to the game content that's what's being pushed into the game mechanics and to the game experience so that's where we have the passionate the, the fanatical content and that, that's a huge part of our game because our game is based on a lot of con content a lot then we have the game experience, which is the compulsive part, which is the, the app you have in your pocket, in your hand, that you really want to eat, where you really want to get into the screen. That's how you feel excited. That's where we use the game mechanics are, of course, tightly connected to the game experience. But the game experience also involves some other elements apart from the core gaming. It involves the social experience and it involves a whole new level of experience that we are launching today. We're going to show you all our work not all some of our work files on what we're doing and why we maybe haven't opened the game yet because we have done a lot of work and we're going to go through that now. So on the game content side, we have tons of content already prepared. We have more than 23,000 pictures ready edited. We have massive access to imagery. So that, that's, that's remember, 23,732 to be accurate as of today. That's a massive library. We're going to push it to maybe 10 times more. But I mean, this is a massive accomplishment because we are editing every picture we are using in the game. Then we move into the questions. We had 25,042 questions verified as of today. It's a massive, when you look on all the combinations, we are into not only billions, not tens of billions, but hundreds of billions, if not trillions of combinations, we can do that. That's divided into the three difficulties. So we had 12,395 questions coming about players, individual players. We had 6,703 questions about clubs, and we have 5,945 ad racing fast questions for World Championship. 2022 starting in November in Qatar. So we are doing all the 32 nations that's in the World Championship. It's coming. It's beautiful. It's it's a massive content library, only the pictures and the questions. This is where we investing large amount of money. Many people think that this is not part of the game. This is a major part of the game. It's the whole thing. This is the hotel room in a hotel. This is our product. Then we have the NFTs that we presented many, many times. We have published 182,557 NFTs, and we have sold 43,085. That's 24%. That's also a massive accomplishment. Imagine, we are handling 
on the service side, on the on the management side, administrative side, 182,000 NFTs. It's not like just walk in the park. Try finding 182,000 files in your Dropbox, and they all have maybe five or 10 gigabytes. And that's the final product. And before that, you probably have 100 gigabytes for each with different designs and things. We also have them in videos, and we have them on IPF, IPF, IPFS, sorry for that. So when it comes to the game content, we have not only invested a lot of money, but a lot of effort, a lot of time. We have invested in this game content for years, actually. We have been adding and adding and adding. And we have a very clever team doing this. We have expanded the team the past months. So we are now having, as you see here, nine people dedicated to deal with this, more or less dedicated to deal with this. We have a great team that Magnus and Gita is managing out of Jakarta that are doing tons of football content. We also do football content here at the headquarter. We have, you have met Morten, a football expert before. We have hired Max. He has been, he's completely a football crazy nerd, and he's even worse than Martin, if it's possible. And he's worked with FIFA, he worked with a lot of organizations, he's been instrumental, he's educated, with master in, in sports and football, he's working here, structuring everything, and make sure that everything is is, is going well. Then we have the, the Indonesian team that's coming out, that has been employed and working out of our office in Jakarta, and we have Runa working from our facilities in Norway at the moment. And he's extremely clever when it comes to pictures and done a great, great job in, in, in structuring all these tens of thousands of pictures and NFTs. So we have a game content crew working and we are expanding it. So that's the game content. So now look on the game mechanics. The game mechanics composed basically of, of sort of three, there are more, more things to it, but we know to talk about three things. So we have the asset side, which you are familiar with from the loot box. It's the, it's the lives, it's the passes, it's the, it's the free, free pass or freezes. These things that make aids for the game or tool, game tools. That's what you use in the tool. All side of these are actually part of that. It's the asset thing that, that, that creates, that, that enable you to play or enable you to enhance your gameplay, actually. Then we have the game modes that we have presented many times before. We started with, with we, have, we have the main game, Battle Royale, we have the brawls, and we have the other one we started with as a kind of a free, free test game. We are changing that a little bit today, and it's becoming much, much cooler. So then we have the features like custom game, like stories, and all other stuff that we, that we have. So let's move on. That's the principle of the game mechanics. And here comes some great news. We have a huge team. We have had this team for a while. We have expanded the team, but all this game game specification, all this game mechanics is, is, is a lot of work. And Alexander has done a great, great job on developing the concept. We are now envisioning you a little bit later today. It's an extension of what we had before. So Alexander has been with us one and a half year. He comes from Google. Great, great guy, have a lot of experience. We have hired Ashish as the platform manager. He has 15 years with Ericsson and IBM. He's a master of technology, working together with our team in India. We have the great team, you see about 25 people coming and going a little bit, depending on the tasks. Then we have Magnus, works in Norway. He works experience with Sony gaming. He's an expert in animations and in, in effects inside. And we have Aruna is also material part because he's a profound gamer and participate in this. So this team has been working for years together. So that's good. And now we have a new thing to, to tell you. We have hired KPMG to be our platform auditor. They started their work earlier this month and they will deliver monthly reports to the public, to the public. So everyone, you and everyone will get a monthly report from KPMG about our technology platform. I don't think there are any one in this industry that's doing that. So we worked a long time to, to land that agreement. It's, it's not free either. It's costing a little bit, but we think it's worth it because it will make give us huge credibility into how the platform is, is composed, how the, 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 the algorithms and everything is working, how the compensation plan is working, how the game is working, and that we actually have a game. A lot of people ask us, do you have a game? What do you have? Okay, all this will be answered by KPMG. That's the best we can get. It's one of the top auditing firms in the world. There are four big ones. There are Ernst & Young, Deloitte, PwC, and KPMG. We choose KPMG, so that's good. Of course, we have all our teams in India, like you've seen in other presentations. So it's a great team that's working on the game mechanics and the platform in, uh, itself. So let's flip over to the game experience, because that's the main thing for the end user, for you, and probably for me and for everyone that's playing the game is how you are, how you are entertained by, 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 by uh, coming into this game. 
So we've shown this to you before. Now we have a look at those frames. They are really cool. We spent a lot of time on details there. A little bit nerdy, but looking good. And it's coming in the new presentations now coming these days. It's, it's amazing stuff. So we also have new videos coming. We had this, you could play for, for prices. Look at that beautiful cruise ship. Wow, it's, it's really... So they're going to have a free version and then you're going to be able to enter tournaments and play versus other people. They have like $1, $2, and $3 tournaments. And then people will be able to win prizes and and different things and, and they have all of this stuff. I just wanted to point that out. Really enticing. And, but there is a void here. There is a void. Billions of dedicated sports and entertainment fans so Roylan, your question about what is the audit from KPI going to mean? That's a great question. Let's ask Shelly when she gets here, okay? I'll, I'll uh, thank you, Firecat, for sending me that. They don't have this community. You can have leaderboards and you can share it in social media, but we lack something. We lack something that gives an edge, something. Anybody has a question, type it in there and I'm taking notes. I'm gonna, t I'm writing all everyone's questions down. So if you have a question, if it's if, any question, just write it down, we'll get it answered guys, okay? And we see, I won't say we have seen what we are doing because what we are doing is unique, but we've seen these virtual communities like Sandbox, like Axie, the kind of coming. I, I, I got a message, <laughs> sorry for that. So we, we, we see we need something more. And what we need is a virtual world that accommodating the biggest fandoms and engage billions of fans so they can really find fame fortune and do the fanatical swipe so this we have presented this before the fandom metaverse but we never gone into detail how we're going to do it and now we have today we are launching this how should i say presentation about okay guys so when the, when we bought in originally in this like two three months ago this was not even this was just an idea and they've taken that idea over the past couple of months and watch this. This is this is really cool. The fandom meetup. I will say one thing. This is a conceptual architecture presentation. This is a comprehensive thing we have been working on for quite a while. We have been working on from a strategic point of view. And we have been working from a technical production point of view, trial and error. And you're going to see. So this is can have a big under construction label on what we are showing you now. It's not the final product have a lot of great people working on this. So I got I gotta go through. So the idea is that we create a whole virtual world with real buildings and each of these buildings, they are connected to a fandom. You see here Real Madrid in the front. That means you can on your mobile phone, you can enter the building and you can play the Real Madrid game. And there is a lot of perks. To it. So we call it the fan tower and it's divided into bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond levels. There are 100 levels in each tower. They have the same division. So what you, what you do, you can enter this building and you can play your way to the top. When you get to the diamond level, level, you become owner of the building. So it's not that easy to get. Now listen to this. You can actually play the game for free, play through it, get to the top, and you can start making money if you do that. There, we have some really pretty good algorithms. So. The way we have constructed these algorithms is that a regular player needs to spend somewhere between 100 to 200 hours to get to the top. And then it becomes really steep because each of the five levels have 20 sub levels, sub, sub levels. So it becomes very steep from the 80th level when you become diamond to get to the 100th level. You will get ownership during that trip. On the way up, if you're spending 100, 200, 300 hours gameplay, you will be spending money. You will be spending super to buy, you don't need, that most people will do for the passes, for the freezes, for a lot of extra things. And the cool thing, we don't go into too much detail today, but every level has their own store. So there are perks on each level that you cannot get if you haven't played to get there. So what he's saying is guys, every time you go to a certain level, the store inside of the game will have different options of things that you can buy while you're playing. So this is to get people playing, having fun, spending money. I mean, people play phone games all, you know, all, all, all day long at work or whatever it is. This is actually something that people will be interested in playing. And then you'll be able to make money up here. I, I'm going to ask Shelly, how do people up here make money? And what does that look like? Okay. So <clears throat> this is a whole new way of engaging fans in a virtual community, in a virtual world, in a fandom metaverse, as the world have never seen before. We are creating this from scratch. We are creating these towers for the main football clubs. We're going to have what we call Football City, Football Avenue. We're going to have Hollywood. We're going to have the Music Avenue. There's a lot of things coming related to this. It's a huge thing. So a cool thing that we are doing on the conceptual architecture is that 
when you're looking at clubs, they are fighting, like here Manchester United fighting towards Liverpool. So we are amending the height of the building based on how many fans that's inside and how good they're playing. So that's a dynamic building body. We, we design everything from scratch. We're going to show you a little bit about it. So everything here will be dynamic. So there will be a fight between the clubs. Who has the biggest building? It's really cool. It's really cool. It's never been done before. That's why it takes a little bit of effort to do it. It's really cool. And when we invented this, we, we, we wanted to see another level of engagement. So people can, okay, you know that people like to work together. Okay, we bring in people, we play more, we get our building higher. We can, we can do a lot of things. And we're using also a little bit of mechanics from Monopoly, one of the best board games ever. There's a lot of things coming in. So this is what we are, what we are, what we are creating. We have employed an architect. She is a she, Gina. She is actually from, from Qatar, working out of Doha. And that's probably why we have a little bit of this modern architecture, because in that area, there's a lot of modern architecture. So what we have here is the skeleton of what we are creating. We are creating a whole virtual world based on real world architecture. And we are creating every building from ground up, every street, everything is created. It's a long, it's not a long process. It is heavy machinery or computers to do it with rendering. You need a lot of creativity to do this. So this will set us apart from competition because we own the whole freaking world we are creating. We own it. We control it. And not only that, we are creating unique buildings for every club or for every fandom. So here we see Barcelona and here we see it in a, in a contextual where we're putting it together like a skyline. It's really cool. We have all this, of course, in vivid colors. We are showing you this a little bit reduced today. Beautiful buildings with a lot of details. And the thing is, this is not a picture. This is 3D po polygons. This is, this is mathematics that create these buildings. So we are able to have this building crack, sweat, grow, bend over. We can do whatever we want with this building. Imagine the creativity we can have. Imagine what we can do when you can pop buildings next to your shoulder and you see they're growing. Wow, that's going to be FC United versus Liverpool, FC Barcelona versus Real Madrid. The fight, the heat is on. Really cool. So a little bit how we work and why this is a little bit time consuming. We are creating it from scratch, like we said. Here we see how we start modeling. We start modeling and we want to have a little bit of futuristic, futuristic design. I mean, many of these could be old brick buildings or could be cartoons, but we don't want to have them. We have a lot of ideas, not only ideas, we have a lot of concrete plans about these buildings, how they're going to work, how they're going to move, how they're going to be. This is a really massive enhancement to the game we are doing. So here you see all the rich, how we start doing it. This is actually in black and white. We start doing all the details in a creative manner. We also zoom in and go into detail on the building and we are putting brand, branded things into the building. And that's how we're going to catch the brands because the brands will have their own buildings. Of course they will. Have. So he's saying that Nike, Adidas, any kind of big brand that wants to come and partner with these guys and have their ads and playing and stuff like that, they're going to be able to play, you know, put it on buildings and all that kind of stuff. So this is going to entice big money from you know anything at all, you know, FIFA, whatever it is, to to want to put money into this so and, and be, have here it. is some of the things we want to achieve this is just working copious conceptual architecture it's not the final thing we're going to have much more interaction much more uh, cooler thing these are the entry sort of starting points so you can imagine when each of these buildings we can label as a board ap yacht club because we have hundreds and thousands of buildings as we move on each of them is a fandom itself only the manchester united building probably going to be tens of millions of people or players and they can fight their way and when you get to the diamond level when you get to the diamond level and yes if you have a diamond pack you are able to start playing on the diamond level you will become one of the owners of the building and that means that everything that takes place in the building of staking will also stake to you and we are coming so he said everything that happens inside the building when it's just the staking. So I have a question written down about this just so everyone knows so you don't have to write it down. So I'm going to be asking about how are people, if they get to diamond level, how are they going to be able to make money off of this? And so I just want to let you know, guys know that. With not only the NFTs we already have, they are already connected and staking and everything. This will include millions of NFTs. 
because every building will have its own NFT scheme and that will be on every level. You're able to buy yourself into imagery on the wall. You are able to enter into galleries. You are able to, to buy merchandise we create. We are using ripples. We cost nothing to create NFTs. We're gonna, you're going to be able to buy the jersey from Ronaldo. You're going to be able to buy the moustache of Freddie Mercury or the glasses of Elton John. It's amazing what's coming in here. We are also combining it with, with true avatars that you will get free when you join. So this is part of the whole marketing strategy. So you're going to be able to make your own avatar and then you're going to be able to buy different things for your avatar in the game is what he's saying. And when he says ripples, he's talking about XRP, just so everyone's familiar. Why should people join? Because we have the best product out there. That's the Liverpool and Manchester United. Of course, you can see we're using the colors of Real Madrid, Barcelona. This is just rough examples. It's not the final render at all, but it's, it's a very good example of what we're doing. We are not only doing it with clubs. We are doing it with famous people. Brad Pitt versus Leonardo DiCaprio. They have a lot of followers. They have a lot of people that... So when he said Brad Pitt versus Leonardo DiCaprio, basically what's going to happen, guys, is let's say you're, you're, you're a huge Brad Pitt fan, okay? And you know everything about Brad Pitt and you're playing the game in the Brad Pitt Tower. You're going to get all of Brad Pitt's questions, right? Was he born this? What Did he do this movie when? Did Blah, blah, blah. In the Leonardo DiCaprio Tower, you're going to be able to face off against playing Brad Pitt and you can play Leonardo DiCaprio. You go with what knowledge you know. You don't have to play a random thing. You can play what you're comfortable with and then you can face off against other people in other kind of buildings and things like that. I want to, want to play games about their movies or music or whatever. I mean, of course, have Lady Gaga, Britney Spears. These these are not tuned for... So there's a question. Have they spoken to UFA or FIFA or any big football organizations about this? Let me... He's going to talk about that in here. They are working with some people that are talking to these football clubs that is licensed to do so. Truly for mobile. But we, we have a whole concept around how we do this. And that's why we create everything from scratch. Because we have the... It's based on vectors and poly, uh, polygons. So we are able to... to um, really massages inside the mobile it's gonna be really cool and like i said brands harry created the emirates tower and the nike tower with the nike swooshing go do you think people will enter nike to play about in example nike's we do questions for nike about their history about their product or even about athletes they, they are sponsoring and they will bring in and you will get free tokens from nike to enter other kind of games or you can even win prizes inside the, the nike tower there are tons of things and I was just in the United States speaking to one of the biggest leisure groups in the world, the leisure and gaming groups. And we have a really, really cool concept here. So this is unique stuff. It doesn't exist out there. And it will probably not exist from any team in the very nearby future because this is something, it takes not only creativity to, to do it, it takes a lot of resources to create it because doing this 3D modeling is comprehensive stuff. This is where we want to end up. This is, again, just a mock-up. We're going to have this whole city in color. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be different to the heights on the building. There are tons of things. But there is more. We haven't forgot our game and game modes. They fit into this. So inside each building, you will be able to fight inside that fandom. That's our free game where you're just fighting to rank up inside a building, and you can rank up inside as many buildings you want if you want to become a diamond in Manchester United and a diamond in FC Barcelona, it's okay. You just need to play. That's that's okay. The only that is free to play inside the buildings, and there's no prices. There could be prices in terms of token and, and NFTs and stuff like that. that that's, that's inside the building. Then you have the battles, which happens outside the building. That's where you do the battle royale, where you swipe to win prices. And then you have on the corner, you can fight with other people. That's the brawls, where you can head over to, in example, a famous tower, and you can fight that seller inside his own tower, and they will make money from it. Coming to that, coming to that. There is a lot of good things today. So that's the, that's the metaverse. And we have the park. Of course, you need to meet other people. So you need to enter in there. We have the social aspect of it. So let's say you play yourself to the diamond level of, of Manchester United. You will be able to connect in private channels with other diamond members. That means you know a lot about Manchester United. You will have posting privileges inside the Manchester United the communication channel. There is a separate streaming channel inside each tower that you will be able to join and have different privileges as you move up, up the ladders. And you will, of course, meet other people. And this is also a good way of segmenting how you meet other people. You will have your own castle, your own home, where you're able to expose your own NFTs and your own stuff, your own thing. This we are still developing, so it's not finished. At the same, the store is coming, of course. There is a big store in this city. And inside every building, there is a store, actually. And you will be able to buy that different things. There are also 
convenient uh, other stores like big big shopping centers where you can buy different things so uh, we are highly commercial and this is also where we have now for those of you who haven't seen we have changed the legend to platinum and the origin to diamond to be more aligned with the gaming world of bronze silver gold platinum and diamond all the big companies have so we have brand venues you saw i showed you an example nike there are so many we can do. There are tons of things. We are bringing about on board some really new people that will take this to a whole new level, and you're going to meet them shortly. So everybody's asking when it starts launching. It starts launching in September and will be fully launched by November when the World Cup Championship in football starts. So, so it's going to. So they're aiming to start in September. It's probably going to be a certain area of the world that they open up and test it, test the market first. And they want to get it ready to go by November because I think there's like a, a big, huge soccer event. Sorry, I'm not a huge soccer fan, so I don't know exactly what the event is. But that's what they're aiming for, a global release in November of this year. There's a lot of work we're doing now. And there's a lot of work still to be done. But we have already done a lot of work and we prepared. And we will, September, start rolling this out. And it will be rolled out gradually. And it will create massive interest from the, the the fan groups around the world. And we have now the connections and the power to reach them all. And I'm going to talk about that very shortly. So this is connected, this, this strategy is coupled and connected and aligned with what we're doing on uh, other, other parts. So we have a great team that's working on this. We want to expand it. We have Raider been with us for a long while, Rune, like we spoke about. We have Marco doing stuff, very good guy. And we have the, the architect, actually, Adina, coming from, she, coming from, from Qatar. It's very cool. She's very diligent, do great, great work on, on these things. And we're going to expand that team also. But it's very difficult to, to, to expand that team. Not difficult, but it's, 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 it's labor. So you need to, to bring people up to speed. And they are doing a great job. It's better to spend a little bit extra time and to do it in the fashion. And the end product will be just simply compelling. That's what we want. So that goes the game. I'm not going to ask for any questions. So now he's going to get into the partnerships. Like if somebody was asking, have they spoken to any U, 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 EU, FA or FIFA organizations, brand and asset protection? He's going to start getting into what they're doing with that. Because I'm not going to answer any questions to it. I think we have answered everything. The key takeaway, massive improvement to the fandom metaverse. The whole gaming engine we already have programmed and spent millions of dollars on content and mechanics is fitted into it. And it's launching starting in September. Okay, so that's what we say. One second, just a little Coca-Cola. Then we move on to the creators, where fortune favors the ball. Well, we have 100,000 members connected to our platform. Well, a little bit more. We have 50,000 token holders, and we have some great people working with us. And some people come, some people go. That's the, that's the life in business. And what we do with our creator scheme it's creator is the new affiliate uh, word for affiliate is the new word uh, buzzword in the whole crypto in the whole gaming space creators is, is a is a is a kind of industry term so with the creator program we empower everyone to make money from their creations and connections simply that's what we do we empower everyone to make money and we do that to a series of loot boxes we change the name on premium to entry we have the bronze silver gold change the name on legend to platinum and origin to diamond we have a complete lineup with different perks that enables you to make money with us. And that's what it's all about. It's about building a framework. And for you, we have a framework, a modern business model that will let you partake in our business already at this stage while we're building the network, you're earning a little bit of commission, not a little bit, quite much actually, way too much. And then when we open the game, the fluid gates of the game, those who have been active and have contributed, they will, they will be largely rewarded for many, many years to come. So the bonuses that we have there is creator bonuses. And those are really good. Like I said, it's divided into follower bonus, staking bonus, and pool bonus. And we also open another tranche of the pool. We expanded the pool without diluting the, the initial. Okay, so pool tokens are what you're going to use. You know, this is when I brought this up two or three months ago. There was only like 1,200 pool tokens left of the original batch. And those ones had some some key features in, in making money as the game goes on through advertisements and different things. But they open up a new tranche of pool tokens that doesn't affect the first one that is going to pay out 
indifferent. So he's going to talk about this next phase of pool tokens. If you're doing this and you're just trying to get your research, you should go back to the other video I did with them and I can post that here. And then we can ask Shelly about the pool tokens and stuff like that and having her explain it a little bit better to you show pool holders so we, we have done that we're going to get more information coming but we have been working with a lot of new teams and we have been informing and keeping keeping a, a lot of stuff moving in the background so we haven't had all the energy to to be out and, and distributing everything but we're going to get that to the market now so we create the bonuses works perfectly we are now working heavily on redesigning the back office it's been a little bit more obstacles than we, because it's very complex. It's very complex. And we, there's only a few of us that can really say yes or no on, on a lot of things. But we, we're starting now on Monday. And hopefully within a few weeks, we will have that finalized. So that's the creative bonuses. But we need more. There is a huge need for more because we have entered into an agreement with some people, not the people, it's actually a well a well-established company with more than 25 people been, been in the football industry for more than 20 years. They are licensed FIFA agents. They have access. They are now working on a deal for us where we close. I cannot disclose any names. There are disclosed and undis disclosed party with nearly 600 million active users. So more than five, more than half a billion, half a billion football fans are connected. So they're working with a company that has connections that is, you know, certified licensed to do FIFA. And then I think it was EUFA, I believe. And they, they, they and themselves have a 600 million user base uh, with these football fans. And that's who they're trying, you know, they're working on this deal. Um, I, I will have to ask Shelly if this deal's done yet. I don't believe it is, but um, they are very close. To this source. So that's one thing we are lacking. It's very close to closing. We have other leagues and clubs coming in. And we're going to speak a little bit about that later. We're bringing in, an example, we will have Shelly coming in from US. She works a lot with the basket teams and all that. She... That's the Shelly that's going to come to answer your questions. We'll tell you all about that. And see, I'm a little so filling on this. But we need more. We need much more. We need something for the stars. We want the superstars to really engage. And to do that, they don't understand. Actually, nobody understands how a binary is working. They want a very simple and predictable and solid solution. So we created it. We created it. We have the ability to do what we want with our platform. And we are creating a product now that will bring the superstars beyond what they get from, an example, YouTube and TikTok in revenue. This is crazy. I just want to add, add something here. Uh, Abras, we're going to talk. Okay. We've been sitting in a meeting now, and also with, with the, from Amanda and Shelley, they opened some, some doors that we, we never could believe. We are now talking with people that this is so big. It's like, and you see, they are so impressed. They are crazy about the platform. And when we now talk, you know, TikTok, they, the, 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 the big players, they use TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and they get paid two to three months later. And we get paid in two seconds. They are on fire. You know, the meetings we have now, it's like, <laughs> Shelley will also explain I love how he cuts him off. He's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm in the zone here. Let's get back to it. I just thought that was funny. Oh, the big baby I'm talking about. I want to join yeah. this. So, so, so we have something that's really, really exciting. That's why I'm so super pumped now. Rest your case. <laughs> I know you're excited. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to speak about that shortly. Okay. That's funny. So the stars, we need something for them. And that's where we are happy to introduce a whole. And this wasn't this wasn't back in two or three months ago. So like the 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 metaverse thing was just a, you know an idea, and they're working on it now. And then this creator star, I do think this is kind of genius. You know, if, if this goes as well as he's saying it's going to go, or how he thinks it's going to go, I do think you're going to get people to come in and actually play this game or have their games. New loot box that's beyond everything. It's called Star Loot Box, and you can't buy it. It's not, uh, you cannot buy it. You are only invited to get it. And that loot box is only for superstars with 100,000 or more followers. You need to have a proven track record in doing that. And this, they will get a flat 10% from everyone in their entire network. Whether it's direct or not direct, they will have 10%. So if a star comes on board and 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 goes gets their dues out of their loot box and they have their own game and all of their own stuff if our fans are playing it they're going to get 10 percent of revenue generated for themselves is what he's saying that's what they get if they engage in games let's for argument's sake ronaldo we use always use ronaldo now he's with binance so we probably <laughs> you probably we have to do a deal with binance here so if we do games ronaldo creates his own game 
and he gets his followers to play it, he will earn an additional 10%. And if he create an NFT scheme and we create it for him, he will earn 10% of the revenue. And if you do campaigns, which we need to do, like promotional campaigns and stuff like that, to get into, really get into the media and catch fire, you get another 10%. So basically, if he has own games, do campaigns, he will earn 30, up to 30%. If you do, in addition, will earn on the NFTs. So up to 30%, then 20, 30% will earn. And that's a very simple proposition for the stars. Okay, how much will I make? 10% of everything, that's it. Easy to calculate. Every star can do it. Every agency understands it. Then we have the match. So if Ronaldo brings in Messi, Slatan, whatever, he will earn 10% on all his direct matches, period. That's it. So if somebody is very cool at, uh, let's say, Manchester United, one guy is recruiting all the others. He will earn from everyone else. Simple system. We have it already developed. It's already there with, with, with what we have. And it can become huge amounts of money. And this is where we're going to excel. Because the other channels like YouTube, etc., when you start looking into it, it's not that well paid. Could be, but it's all pending. We are not, there's not only the Kardashians out there. There are a lot of other everyman influencers, but there is a lot of people with 100K or more followers out there. And those we are attacking or addressing with this scheme. So if you look on the financial example on the total bonus here, that's based on 100,000 paying players that spends a dollar a day, which is nothing, absolutely nothing. So basically a dollar a day is not much. We, we just got some, some figures from, from, from Indonesia. It was a, was a research and a kind of analysis done by the Football Association of Indonesia. There are 50 million people in Indonesia that want to spend $70 a month on, on, on merchandise related to football. Not only on gaming, but on jerseys, on, on, on matches and all this kind of thing. Massive amount. So that puts Indonesia to a more than in excess of $40 billion football market a year. Massive. So look at this. If you have a million followers, you have 10% conversion, et cetera, et cetera. You're able to actually earn seven and a half million dollars a year on 100,000 followers that's paying. Imagine the big stars, if they have 10 times that, 20 times that, can become a really, really cash cow for, for, the, for, the, for the, the, the stars or across the board. So imagine if we have hundreds or even thousands of these stars generating and you can ask, how is this affecting the other loot box revenue? This will be deducted before the other loot boxes are rewarded commission. So this is a kind of a marketing expense. It's a kind of a, yeah, let's call it a marketing transactional expense. This is a product that's really cool and it will bring tons of revenue to the platform and to the other loot boxes. I won't say they're losing out. I will say they are winning because if you put these horses in front of the carriage, that carriage will be huge and it will go fast. These guys needs to make big money. And that's what we created for simple star. So well, that's the star. That's the star. And that's what we're doing now. And there's a reason why we're doing that. Because we're looking at the creative team we have. We have two, particularly two new guys, Lou and Jason. We signed on. We signed on more here, as you see. They're coming in with more than 20 years of football experience. Lou has more than 25 years of football experience. He's a licensed FIFA agent. He's been instrumentally involved. You can name all the top clubs in the world. He's been there. He's been partnering with, with them. Uh, there's no point even mentioning because he's been there. Whereas Manchester United, Liverpool, Juventus, FC Barcelona, Real Madrid, he's been in business with all of them. And they are, Jason and Lou are now working hard to establish the connections and deals. They are deal makers when it comes to this. Very strong addition to our creative team. And they have tons of experience and uh, we're really looking forward to the results. And I think we, within, within not too long time, we will be able to announce some really cool partnerships. That's really cool. So when it they comes also, to- They also did, they, they also did the, the transaction for David Beckham to Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. So you know, this is big, big guys. This is the big guys. <laughs> and then we have Dr. Aaron. Dr. Aaron is a very particular guy, works out of Germany. He's a lifelong branding specialist and marketing guy. He's been working with top top brands like Puma, Adidas. You you have more, Sion? You know more about him? Yeah, Volkswagen. Yeah, he's been Volkswagen. in the big league in Germany. 
and he's working with, and we work with our brand, connect us to the brands. He is responsible for creating the whole brand approach. We are doing whole revamping of how we do the spaces and the brands. It's really going to be really comprehensive stuff. We're not going to talk about it today, but that's where Dr. Aaron and Haider will work together. Okay, we have Warren here. We will speak to Warren. So you guys can see, this is not just like a small thing, right? You got people all over the world, right? These guys, this guy's in Germany, Europe, right? America, I mean, Japan, Germany, I mean, Asia. These guys are all over the place. The team is gigantic gigantic work on this project. Towards the end, so we're not going to spend too much time on Warren. He's a crypto specialist and investor, works as our head of corporate finance. Then we have the one and only, Stian Alex, of course, and Stian Andrea, his cousin or brother or whatever. <laughs> where, where are you connected? Okay, then we have all, all the other creators, like the other leaders we're working closely with on a daily basis is John. John Clench, everybody knows John. Should we bring John live here and hear what he has to say? How do we do that? Ask to unmute. You need to unmute yourself, John. Come on, John. Hello? Hi, John. Hi, Andreas. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. And yourself? So it's I'm guy. very good. I'm very excited because we are on a very good note. Do you think we're going to make any grain beans with these things? I am very, very excited about the news of KPMG. I already knew about it, but... The yeah. extensive information you provided with us today, that is really nice because I know the big four very well. And that's for me, really big news that I can relate to really good. Okay. So yeah, we, it's been a little bit, how should I say, it's been a period where we have done a lot of changes and things when it comes to the comp plan in 2020. The big four, I think it's like PricewaterhouseCoopers, DI Piper, I think is in the big four and it's them, KPMG. And then there's one other one, but these are the biggest, some of the biggest firms in the world. 22 or in late 2021. Now we are all settled. We're not going to twist it around anymore. We have done a lot of transactions over the past months and we are moving forward. How do you see it from your perspective? You've been with us on this uh, compensation thing for, for a while. How do you see the next, next months from your perspective and how will you contribute to our growth? Okay. So, well, I, as probably everybody knows that has been around here for a long time, I created the original compensation plan, which definitely was very powerful and I got a lot of accolades all over the world for that. But the evolution of the plan as it is today, it, it is uh, it's simpler to understand, it's simpler to communicate. And actually my original plan was maybe a bit complicated for even industry insiders to comprehend in the first place. And the plan as it is now, it is easier so people can explain it as I call it on a napkin presentation in a cafe or meeting someone and the simplicity will definitely uh, contribute to to the more fast growth of, of the project so I think that's a good thing to simplify things I make things rather complicated and some other great minds at the company made it simple so congrats okay John so you're positive and you are supportive and you're ready yeah, yeah, definitely. And I would like to, in the next few months also to teach people who want to be taught about tap routing, which I believe is a skill next to follow up. That is something people should master to build successful network marketing businesses. So that's something that I want to bring on to the table for those who want to learn that. And yeah. Okay. So we will get you on the air shortly. That was pointless. Just pointing that out guys that was pointless the guy just tooted his own horn and wasted two minutes sorry okay thank you john thank you for being with us we're gonna bring up we're gonna bring up amanda just one second so this is amanda right she's here. in charge of global there we have hello amanda hello how are you i'm good i'm good the question is how are you i'm very well i am really really excited by what we've just seen so it's one thing having a to know about it but now to actually visualize it to have the sneak peek and yeah look i'm very excited i'm feeling really really blessed to be here to be welcomed as part of this amazing team moving forward i was really really excited by the concept when i saw it initially in those early years now it just hurts my head to think about everything that's going to happen how amazing it's going to be i'm so impressed by how far the project has come look i just want to accolade to you guys for your tenacity your commitment to your vision and i'm just so looking forward to everything that is going to come in the future moving forward we're also very grateful having you here and you've known us for a couple of years and now you really over the past three four months you really excelled and brought in a lot of new members a lot of stuff and how do you see you building i mean you have built you huge communities before and you have a background in finance and been in the banking and finance sector for several years and educated into business administration so how do you see the 
the, the business side from your side and how you're going to grow the community over the next yeah next short short period next days next hours. the next days the next hours next yeah hour. look i think it's interesting times definitely interesting times particularly in the crypto space and i guess for myself yes having you know a bit of time now in the network marketing space and looking at the goings on right now i really wanted a project that was a real world project that was very strong i look at the crypto space at the moment with a lot of things that have been going on the the terror and the luna i think we're going to have a lot of eyes on the space by the regulated in the future which is one of the amazing strengths of this project that we are a hybrid the business model is not reliant on the markets as per se so that really excites me i think the product itself will sell itself there is nothing like this in the world that i've seen before you know your commitment as well you want to create a platform that paid instantly and you did that that is a first of its kind in the world as well so look i don't think it's really going to be a challenge when you have something this good to work with you know who's going to say no yeah, we're, doing the hard, we're doing the, the hard way. We walk the talk. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for all your welcome. support. And uh, we're going to mute you down and we're going to bring in Shelly from US. Shelly is... So Shelly's who's going to be joining us. A connection of Amanda and she has done some great work for us in America. Hello, Shelly. Hi, everybody. Hello, Andreas. Hey, how are you today? I couldn't be better. My heart is just exploding. I've got my adrenaline pumping. I'm so, so excited for everything you've shared and what we've gotten to see and just all the new developments. It is immense and what a true honor it is to be here. And I'm just overwhelmed. Like this is the most exciting project. Okay, very cool. Now I want you and Sian, you can explain together a little bit. You have been in a lot of meetings and you have uh, <laughs> go into the details for us. Absolutely. Well, so yeah, we have... Yeah, it's crazy. But if Shelly just introduced us, uh, and said, because she's been in this space for a long time, and she's super connected. Yeah, I'll, I'll, absolutely. I'd love... That guy's kind of pointless, I'm just saying. Sorry. To introduce myself. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Shelly LeBaugh. I am in New Jersey, so I'm in the U.S. I got into crypto very early, bought my first Bitcoins from Charlie Shrem before it was even a dollar. <laughs> so I didn't really know what I had my hands on, got rid of most of it, and then came back a few years later to move what was left over into a wallet and realized I had made a tremendous mistake because what was left over was just a little bit of dust and it was worth thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. And I was like, I got to jump in. I need to understand this. So what I did at the time was really just get around all the people that were creating this technology. And obviously I followed my best friend into strategically how he placed himself in the space. He was, ha he was sponsoring hackathons. I, I just followed his lead. He was convincing me I needed to go into consulting because I had really been in the space for so long. I ended up opening my own boutique development company with a couple other co-founders. And since it was a startup, you know, I had to wear many hats. That was, you know, building out the educational resources. It meant, you know, doing the in-house fund to get projects seated. I was doing strategic partnerships. I was going to all the events, sponsoring the hackathons. I was all over the place and I was very fortunate to get around some of the best people in the industry. And in doing so, you know, it was, it was quite, a, quite a good experience. Now, I was introduced to this by Amanda about eight months ago, saw how beautiful the project was. I didn't have an exit strategy for my own company at the time, but I was really looking for something that would just bring me back to life and ignite that fire, something that would really allow, you know, everyday people to participate without all the obstacles coming into crypto, right? There's so many, especially in the U.S. for us, there's a lot of choke points. So I... We have to be a little bit short, Shelley. I'm sorry, you got it. Yeah, I'm just going to move it to where they start Breathing. talking about the project again. If they're it just want to come in here and uh, talk a little bit about Maybe you're allowed to speak in German yeah, to the uh, partners uh, join this call yeah, because I know they are all waiting and they are all happy and yeah, be delighted to uh, bring the our project, our baby. Yeah, yeah I think. Good morning. Once you get in here, you are. Hold on. I think we're here. Good morning. We have to speak English. Okay. Yes. So how are you? You are in Germany. I'm in Bali at the moment. Bali at the uh, moment. Yes, a few things to, to sort out here. I just met with one of the football guys. From so you Bali. are heading our Indonesian desk, Soto, and you have employed way too many people in my mind, and you're doing a lot of good work down there, and you are creating massive content base also, particularly for the top five clubs in Indonesia. And I want you to reflect a little bit about... The so this guy's working with the top five football clubs in Indonesia. The football market in Indonesia and the size of it, because sitting here in the Nordics, or even in the Americas or in German, you maybe think of Indonesia as a small little pound, even if it's the world's third biggest country. So could you enlighten us a little bit? Because we, we gave you some homework and I know you've done it. Yes. Okay. So I've been out here as an entrepreneur, I'd say, for 20 years over and got to realize how unbelievably massive this market is. Once you get in here, you are set forever. 
basically in different it just doesn't matter which industry but just to give you a few a few numbers here indonesia is depending on who you ask but it's going to be the fourth largest economy in the world some say 2024 some say 2035 etc but it's happening and it's happening fast here when it comes to football <coughs> the indonesians are i would say quite crazy about the football just to again give you like we'd say one of the, we are working on the five top five uh, clubs here at the moment to to create these club games just one of them is one of the, it's called Bersi Bandung. It's one of the major cities here. They have 22 million fans dedicated to the club. And it's, it's a way of life for these people when it comes to football here. We, we, only, uh, we, only, we only need 2 million of them to spend a dollar a day to bring the token to $10. Yeah, I think that's going to happen quite fast, honestly, because like you said earlier, and it, believe it or not, I was actually interviewing the... Guys, just so we know, it, it would, it's going to take billions of dollars to get, they have market cap to get to a $10 token. Just want to be very straight and forward with you. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a, a slow... Well, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be slow, but it's going to be a growth period. So when he says $10 is easy, you need to ignore that. It's going to take some time, okay? the director of the of the football association here and, and they did have a survey saying that actually it was 70 million indonesians okay. spending 50 dollar a month on football in, in one way or the other now it's like mind-boggling numbers so many tend to forget about indonesia as but remember it's three, 300 million people here all football fanatics from start even when they start preschool they join for example we talked about bandung club here in bandung they go they they when they were in preschool they join something they call it bobuto it means that you are a supporter in the local dialect language that they have there okay. it means so, so then you are a supporter for life and this follows and it's a big traditional thing is, uh, there are some crazy numbers because yes. so not only the volume but also the ticket size which is kind of surprising to me also when i heard about it yesterday i was a little bit like what <laughs> I know, no, no. Uh, but it's not really in the statistics we know about. So anyway, you're doing a great job. Uh, we're going to have a big focus in Indonesia. We're going to do other countries in Asia. We are already, as Lou and Jason already are well connected in Vietnam, Philippines and uh, Japan. We, I just got a message from Oliveira, our Japanese uh, head, of, uh, head, of, head of Japan. He's been hindered, what do you call it? He had something with his uh, connection. We couldn't join. He will join next time. So he's our head in Japan, and he has more than 10,000 Japanese members under his umbrella, and he's doing a great, great job. He's commuting between Japan and Brazil. He's currently in Brazil. We had a, a great meeting with him yesterday. We also have, as you know, in our office here in Norway, we have Bara. He's a Japanese national. He works with us here in the headquarters. He's currently on vacation in, in Tokyo and Yokohama, meeting some of the leaders also. And so we are nurturing, we are, we are following up on our Japanese business contacts closely. And as soon as the Japanese border are open for travel, me and Stians will, will go there and we will have events in Japan. We will also have events other places shortly. So that's, that's a lot of things uh, going on. But okay, thank you, Magnus, for that. I gotta now, we're gonna, we're gonna stop there with the, with the creator and we're gonna move a little bit further. So let's talk about the corporate thing. And I'm gonna bring up now Stian and Andre and we're gonna have Warren coming in and we're gonna start discussing about finance. We're gonna discuss money and we're gonna discuss this we a little here. bit what we are planning. So Warren, hi, how are you? Hi Andre, how are you mate? I'm good, I'm good. So Warren is our head of corporate and he's a British citizen from his birthplace. And uh, but he's a world traveler. So Warren, sure. what could you give us uh, one on one on yourself ahead of a quick, just a quick few sentences about your position and how you came into Super One? Sure. So my background is actually in video games. I have a bachelor's in science in computer and video games. First grade honors, one of the top fifteen percent results of all UK degrees. So it's a very very high and quite prestigious grading, if you will. I had a video game studio in the UK when I was uh, younger in a previous life. I sold that and moved to China. I discovered the power of blockchain when Ethereum was launched. I've been in the crypto space. Professionally, I would say from around 2015, 2016, we had various different projects, including a consultancy firm, we had a, an outsourced development. So following the relative successes from that, I was lucky enough to give a TED talk in 2018 on blockchain and data security, which was not the smartest move to do in China, <laughs> telling people that you can control your own data. So the Chinese government was not happy about that. So very quickly after I moved to Vietnam for a few years after, and then moved to Bali, Indonesia, where I met Sin Andre and Sian Alex, where I was semi-retired. And it was actually one of your other investors that pulled me in and made the introduction to Juice and Juice. And after seeing the project, I was like, this is this is incredible. You know, I, I how do I join? You know, I'm, I'm here to help you guys in, in any form, any capacity. So because like Shelly, you know, we've been in the space for several years now, kind of OGs, if you will, we've developed a very large network. So what I'm introducing to Super One is essentially the various components required to maintain you know, not only the price point, but also the infrastructure for a token. So this includes 
different things like the exchange partners, various things like journalists, various things like market makers, for example, and then everything that kind of falls in between. A little bit more oh, sorry. to the people that uh, a lot of people ask about the listing at Goku Market. And uh, I'm happy to announce that we have closed the agreement with Goku Market because they went down the drain. They, they failed a lot in their operation due to the turmoil in the market. They were having issues with their banking partner. So uh, we agreed with them mutually to, to just walk away from the agreement and they paid us back over deposit. So that's, that's good. Very good guys. They have a good relation with the people, but they were unfortunately a victim of the market. So, but that doesn't hinder us, Warren. No, I think it's safe to say the negotiations with three of the top 10 exchanges are going very well. And we should be able to... So he said he's negotiating with three of the top 10 exchanges in the world. So that's your Coinbase, that's your Binance, probably your KuCoin, and, and maybe some other. I don't know if the, those are the three out of the 10, but I'm giving you examples of the top exchanges. To announce some pretty cool things in the near future. I think to say the interest in Super One in this very drastic bear market kind of shows the merits that Super One has, right? The investors are still chasing us, the exchanges are still chasing us, and I think that really stands to the potential of Super One, because when you've got these crypto VC firms, you know, looking at a potential benefit of, you know, one to three years, and they're still chasing, you know, the ability to buy the Super Token, I think that really stands, you know, towards the merits of the team and the efforts that, that everyone's pulling together. So it's going to be really exciting what we can achieve in the next few months. From my perspective, I think that the business model we have is different, is thorough, and is sustainable. So while you have all the, the key, yeah. yeah, because you have all the DeFi projects, let me tell a little story because story is always cool. I was at the Paris blockchain week just before Easter. I met with Alex Paczynski, the founder of Celsius Network. At that point in time, he was a keynote speaker. He had $24 billion under management, as it under management. AMU. I, I was amazing. He was a keynote speaker. The project Celsius was really the top of the pops. Okay. I know him back from 2017 when he started Celsius. I met him in Las Vegas. We were partying. He's a really intelligent guy. The guy invented the IP telephony that, uh, that we use on WhatsApp every day. He's a really smart guy. He grew his company from eight to 800 people in a few years, 24 billion under management. Then came the crypto winter or whatever we can call it. And these algorithms were not working in his favor anymore. And he, he's a smart mathematician. And what happened now? He's bankrupt three months later. It's, it's stopped. They filed for bankruptcy. They were owed three point something billion dollars instead of having under management. So this tells me that the market has been very brutal for many, many projects because I know him and I, I kind of know his, I know his knowledge. And I also happened to be, I was in the United States for a couple of weeks, a week ago, and I went to, on the 4th of July, I was invited to a, a guy that's a, named the godfather of crypto. And we were there, and I was there with, with a lot of crypto influencers, crypto investors. And they all really, first of all, they like uh, what, what they hear about Super One, because like, like uh, this guy is saying, it's an accomplishment, what you have done so far. And now going to the next level, it's cool. But uh, there is a lot of people struggling out there today. And I'm, I'm happy to say that we are on a good note and we are actually doing, I think, you know, sometimes I have in my past, I have done very good when others do bad, <laughs> if you understand. So I think we are into, we've been through, I won't say hardship, but we've been working and working and expanding and expanding. And one of the main corporate challenges we have is not resources or financial resources, it's human resources. It's to get people, to get the right people to work with us and to actually educate them and to actually get them up to speed and to get them to produce it. So I'm happy that you are on board, Warren, I've been for some months now, and that you are spearheading the, 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 the corporate finance thing, talking to these exchanges. Could you elaborate a little bit about the trading solution that we have contemplated that we discussed a lot? Hello, Warren. Yeah, sorry about that. I was sorry, I was muted. Yeah, so we're actually speaking. Well, we actually were speaking to several of the market leaders in terms of market making solutions. We're closing the deal now with what we feel is the strongest partner that's able to develop several custom solutions for us, right? Because that's as you as you pointed out very very correctly, it's all about the sustainability, right? Super One is one of those projects that comes around you know maybe once in a lifetime. So we really need a partner that could really facilitate a lot of what we're trying to achieve. You know, the very new, the kind of groundbreaking, you know, solutions that we're developing. We needed someone that could- Just, uh, just to, 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 to say to the to the people on the call here that, you know, we, when you have 50,000 dog nodes, there, there's always someone who wants to sell, someone who wants to buy, but we need yeah. to protect everyone. So we need to protect the company and every member. And that's why we have, we actually come up with a very delicate solution or very, very, very nice solution. You can explain about it. Tomorrow. 
Yeah, so when you have kind of large crypto investors, you know, coming in buying 100,000, 200,000 tokens, what, what's very important is that we protect, you know, the kind of price point and we protect the rest of the community. So what we don't want to do is essentially someone to come in, buy a large amount of tokens and essentially buy and sell those, you know, putting a lot of buy or sell pressure on the price point. So what we're working with this market making solution partner is essentially disbursement pools and staking pools. So individuals, you know, retail as well as crypto whales can essentially deposit large amounts of tokens, you know, whether that be one token, whether it be 50 tokens, whether it be 500 tokens, whether it be 100,000 tokens. And then what we're able to do is essentially disperse those over a seven day, 14 day, 28 day period to maintain the price point of the token. So as the price dips below or as the price rises above a certain price point, it doesn't have any major effect, which is what, you know, as you said before about sustainability, right? It's not about volatility. We're not here to make the super token jump from $1 to $10 overnight, right? We want to keep it a very sustainable, a very steady price point. And that is not an easy thing to do. So through these disbursement tools, we keep it very fair for the community, very fair for the investors. Hold on, is Shelly, Shelly's in the chat? Hold on, give me, give me a second guys. Let me just make see if she's here. Shelly, are you here? Yeah, DeFi Diva, there you are right there, I see you. Shelly, is there anything else on this in this call that I should play or is it good? I unmuted you, sorry. Hi Shelly. Shelly, you can unmute if you want. Oh, she's probably away from her computer, hold on. Come back when you can. As soon as Shelly gets back, in, oh there she is, she unmuted. <laughs> Shelly! It took me a second to get my device settings rearranged here hi everybody how's it going shelly yeah. so is there i know you've, you've been through that whole call and i know maybe i've skipped through a little bit is there anything else on that call you think is worth us listening to right now or do you think we should just get into the questions i think jump into the question okay i mean there's there's just so much to it it can be like a, a brain dump but overall i think you, you got you got the good meat out of it. <laughs> yeah, I was thoroughly impressed because I mean, it's been a couple months since I've watched like one of those kind of recap videos in that town hall. There's a lot going on with you guys. Oh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> it's spicy. It's been... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is there anything that's happened since the call developments or anything that maybe you could speak on that you are able to speak on? So we brought in a couple of marketing guys to, I, I can't like say too, too much, sure. but their, their job was basically to go out and get really strategic partnerships and they have landed some. So we are in the initial stages of, you know, going through our due diligence and sure. we have our LOIs with two really big, big companies that have a massive viewership. And so I can't say a lot okay. with the stage that we're in, but everything looks really good. And then we've got, I had another call about 7 a.m. this morning that was more directed at like our version of what that would look like in the U.S., you know, looking for, you know, the okay. type of MBA, so you're thinking, MLB. Yeah, if you're thinking like MBA, you would think of like the Bleacher Report. That's okay. kind of the comparative note to what we're doing with the soccer leagues and in Indonesia and the European soccer league. So this is a massive, massive viewership that we are potentially going to be pushed. They're going to be pushing us out. We're going to be able to use their content, which is a massive library, just a really good strategic partnership all around. And so we had a call this morning kind of in the same vein, but U.S. focused. And you know, that looks pretty good too. We're just kind of in the, the beginning stages of that talk. So there's a lot of really good, good things, big things. Matt also might be staying in a hotel that may or may not be in our <laughs> fandom verse. Oh, so, okay. Give it at that. <laughs> do, you, do you wait? So oh, I won't say what the hotel is, but do you guys have actually a contract with that hotel? You know, we are looking pretty good. Wow. Man, you guys have such a big team. There must be like over 100 people working for <laughs> Super One at this point, huh? It's massive. It's so massive. Super Labs, which is over Super One, I mean, it's it's a it's a tech company. So when Andreas talks about wanting to be a super app, it's not a play on words. He's talking about a super app as in like that's where you spend a lot of your time because you can do all of your necessities in one place. So the game will be there, obviously, but there's, you know, financial services that, you know, he's looking at travel, just a lot, a lot of stuff looking towards what the future really requires of us. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, just as, just as human beings, you know, like, you know, super aid type things and just, there's so much to it. I mean, like, 
Yeah, this man is a genius. <laughs> yeah, no, he, yeah. he goes for long walks. And I've heard when you're walking, your brain's actually, I guess your calves are your second heart. And so, or whatever you're, you're doing with both. I don't know. I was watching this thing about health and I'm just, uh, never mind. But anyways, let's get into no, some I, of these questions. I yeah, I mean, he's always walking through the forest. And every time I try to reach out to him, he's always walking. So he's, he's walking and thinking. So, all right. So I have, maybe there's five or six questions here. And if anyone posts it, I'll check in a second here. But how can people make money off the NFTs and the game? So you're buying loot boxes, loot boxes have maybe, let's say you buy a gold loot box and it has, you know, four NFTs in there. You, you, you go in to the marketplace, you, you buy the NFTs that you want, right? And then how do people make money off of those NFTs in the game as, as people are playing? Can you explain that really quickly? Is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah. So in the gold, gold loot box, you would have two gold, two silver, and two bronze NFTs. Okay. You would choose them, use your vouchers, and pick the ones that you want. Now, there's a couple ways, right? Because we have passive, and then we have you know the, the game function. So the utility being when somebody needs a lifeline, if they're purchasing the answer from you, or if they're purchasing time from you, and you're that NFT holder, you're going to get those you know residual commissions based on the use in the game. Now, for staking them in the game, there's a pool for that. So 5% of all the revenue that's tied to NFTs actually goes into this staking pool. So if you are a NFT holder and your cards are staked, which they would be unless you decided you wanted to take them off the platform, they will be automatically staked there for you. So you'll be earning these rewards. So the, distri the distribution model is based on the level of NFT cards you have. The diamond is more valuable in that pool. It's about 10 times more valuable than the platinum. The platinum is 10 times more valuable than the gold, meaning the diamond is 100 times more valuable than the gold in the staking pool. So your share of that, based on your contribution to the platform, is how you get you know, your portion of that 5% NFT revenue. Awesome. Awesome. And then, so it's 5%. Okay. And then he said that the rewards are paid out instantly. Is that, is that accurate? Like if somebody, let's say use yep. your NFT and they, they paid for more time, it's a dollar or whatever. And then so 5% would be 5 cents every time that happened. Is that accurate? Yep. That is accurate. So everything is paid out in real time. Okay. The staking pools on the super token is paid out in additional super. The NFTs and the ad spaces the staking is paid out in super the commissions the real time usage is paid out in xrp in real time and then the pool tokens is paid out in real time in xrp as well beautiful beautiful all right and then i'll ask that question later will nfts will you be able to resell your nfts on the open market on the secondary market after they're all minted out yes so there will be you know the ability to take them off and obviously once we have the game launched and we're you know able to show that we have value behind it there will be you know the the desire for that right because you're going to have a diamond and that diamond has a huge passive income stream plus it would might be the only one of a series of someone that you would normally collect that nft of so there's going to be different reasons why people will want them but yes they absolutely can will have that ability on the platform and as well as taking them off to a secondary marketplace fantastic great good to know How, what is you guys working with kpmg actually do are they auditing the project or the company in real time what what, what does that partnership do for you know holders thinking hey you know kpmg is involved what does that really entail do you do you know yeah, so this is a really big deal because right now we are doing a small capital raise of 10% of the holding company to get some funds for traditional marketing. So with that, we brought in KPMG of India to do the monthly audit so that we can, you know, be able to produce our financials, right? Because right now you can tell we've been, we've been running a company out of Andreas's brain and as much as it's brilliant, like we have you know, to get some certain things organized in order to really thrive and push this out. I mean, we've been very, very fortunate to collaborate and make the partnerships that we have because the synergy is going to be astronomical. And we're all supremely aware that like this really took a lot of head down development time. So now it's like, all right, we got to get organized. <laughs> we needed, you know, some legitimacy to come in and do our financials to audit the platform to audit you know the ins and outs of the revenue coming through and what it looks like and make sure that you know you know we are absolutely 100 we're, you know when something like 
these exchanges go insolvent, you know, nobody sees it coming. You know, yeah. you're you're putting your money in maybe the day before and then it goes down. So we wanted to be way ahead of any of the questions. And it's just, I mean, I, I knew we were going to get a third party auditor. Yeah. I did not know we were coming with one of the big four. <laughs> yeah, that that's a huge one because, yeah. I mean, they're there to make sure that, you know, everything's on the up and up. And if you're doing these raises, they need, you know, financial statements and, and whatnot. So that's really good to know that. It's not just like a surgic audit. Hey, they, they looked at the code. It's all good. This is actually the business being audited itself. So that's great to know. Right. How far away would you say the fandom metaverse is? I know they're still building it and it, it looks like it's so elaborate. It could take some time. Do you have any idea? Is it something like 2023, 2024? I mean, it, it's massive. Yeah, it, it definitely is. So my understanding, the way the roadmap currently looks is we're going to come out with the quick play free game. We're going to roll that out in Indonesia. This is kind of giving us our, you know, beta testing so that when we bring on the paid playing and the brawls and the, you know, the battle royale with the jackpots, then we have our case study is in, we know how well we're scaling, we can roll out smoother and smoother. So we're starting with the free game, which is the quick play, the 10 questions as fast as you can go. And then we're going to roll into the battle royale with the jackpots and the, you know, the pay to play. Mm -hmm. And from there, once we have that in motion and we have scaled and we've done one thing really well, then it will start to appear in the, in the app updates as we're going forward. Awesome. Cool. So it's, it's not too far off. <laughs> okay, great. And then, so, you know, when he was talking about, you know, people can come in and work their way from, you know, the bottom to the top, you know, 102 hours of playing, you know, when you make it to the top in diamond in let's say Barcelona, whatever it is, and he's talking about you making money from staking. Can you kind of explain that a little bit better? So people understand that what he's actually talking about. So if you actually make it as you're an, you're an owner of the building with, you know, maybe a thousand or 2000 other people, what is, what does that look like? So I, I don't know if it's, correct for me to, there's a lot of mechanisms and this is one yeah. of the things that kind of gets convoluted when you're as brilliant as him and he's worked the numbers so it all makes sense but to kind of narrow it down when you come into a building if you are a diamond you are already a you know owner of the building so you don't have to level yourself up but for those you know we've got a lot of people in the philippines that came in you know with ten dollar loot boxes and they they literally keep the lights on and they feed themselves with the you know, the pay to play to earn model. So they can come in and earn their way up, but obviously they would need to pay, you know, in super token to compete in the battles within the buildings. Got so it. as you're competing and you level up, whoever the owners of that building are at level diamond, the revenue that's being created within the building is distributed to the owners of that building. There's also additional ways, and I, I'm not 100% because he actually leaked this to you before he leaked it to me, about the stories and how you earn off the stories. Yeah. So the NFTs have a, a way that they're being leveraged inside the buildings where you're using them to, like, collect the stories behind these players or, you know, it could be the entire league. So I'm not 100%, but I do know that there's an, an additional earning model on the NFTs within those metaverse buildings and he he kind of leaked it a little to you and Dion andre was like let him go we weren't going to announce it yet and i was just sitting there with matt like oh my god there's new information <laughs> yeah i know so. it's been a there's a there's a wall of new information that's been that's been put out yes. in, in this the thing is <laughs> crazy so thank you for answering that so here uh, so someone brought up a great question right and and so you know eufa and fifa organizations they really care about brand asset protection right and so mm -hmm. you know how does that work right because you guys are taking you know barcelona or the stadiums or you know you know people faces and putting them in off nfts and listing their questions online so how does that actually work do you guys get, have to get permission for that is that through that or you know you know is can you explain that maybe a little bit more so we understand that yeah so the nfts themselves we have our licensing through getty images and then we actually kind of it. amplify it with the graphics so it can pulse during you know the start of the game and it's got a little little animation to it got it and then, you know, so that is massively important. That was one of the things I tore apart within the, within the white paper. I'm sure you did. I wanted to make sure they were really, yeah. like, diligent on the, the legal side. And then on the side of some of these soccer clubs, 
They were some of the first that we partnered with, especially within Indonesia, because they weren't asking anything for the use of the licensing. Got it. So that's why we didn't soft launch in the U.S. yet, because obviously we want to roll this out, get the case study proof of concept and show them how much these other leagues were able to earn. So we can leverage that with yeah. you know the NFL and because the, they want millions and millions of dollars to use their their licensing. Sure. They didn't require that of us because of some of the partnerships that we have. And oh. then there are some FIFA licensed agents that have come on that have made a lot of that happen. And there are some of our content creators. So they're the ones helping to build the questions for the game and all that. So you just said the NFL didn't, you know, charge you guys, you know, to so not are, the NFL. Are you no, partnered no, no. with the NFL? No, 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 no. Not, the not NFL yet. would charge us. Got yeah, it. So. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I was going <laughs> to no, say, I was NFL like... for sure. That's why we started in the way that we did, because the Got soccer it. leagues did not charge us for a partnership. Now, we can bring in U.S. players, because they can do their own, you know, endorsement deals and stuff like that. Uh, but as far as the leagues, we don't have the proof of concept yet enough to bring them on without having to pay out a ton. So that's why we're doing the soccer leagues first because they're not requiring us to pay a ton of money. Gotcha. Wait, hey, that makes sense, right? You go, you go with what's least resistant, and then you build out from there. I mean, if other clubs see these guys being very successful, making revenue, or you know, just generating more eyes on their brand, right? That is that in itself could be could be gigantic, right? You nailed it. That's exactly it. Yeah. So when you know, in in that in that town hall, he's talking about a partnership with 600 million viewers and the 25 people that have FIFA licensing to go talk and make deals. Have you guys solidified that partnership? I'm not going to ask you to name it, but have you guys been able to solidify that deal yet? So the one deal, yes. Um, oh, okay. They are the ones that have come in and have moved us forward with this other, I don't know if it's considered a conglomerate, but it is a, it is a pretty large company with a lot of investment funds behind it that run these two massive organizations that are literally the largest in the soccer realm as far as viewership and where people go. Sorry, my cat is knocking everything off my desk. It's all good. My, <laughs> and, I have to close my door when my dog will come in here and just you know hit me for treats, so yeah. no worries. I know, and I get it. So yeah, that's that's what they came in to work on specifically, and they came out the gates running because they had some stuff already lined up, and it looks really, really good. We are still in the LOI, but we are pretty close to finalizing, so as long as that all pans out and it looks like it does, I'm ready to start popping bottles because, I, you know, without making financial claims or financial promises, yeah. it the market research they did on their viewership basically dwarfs our you know our our, our token projection wow so. this could get this could get pretty serious pretty quickly you know with all of these partnerships and all all this stuff going on you know so so explain cuz cuz i've had multiple questions about the pool to, pool tokens and how they switched over you know the, the the original when we we originally met I think that was like not the might not have been the original allocation pool tokens, but that one had like advertising and some other aspects to it. Could you maybe explain the difference between those pool tokens and then the ones that we're seeing now in the new in the new loot boxes? So the advertising is its own passive stream. It's very similar to the NFT. It has its own pool that 5% of all of the revenue from the advertising that's earned goes into a 5% pool. And those who are holding advertising spaces will also get a rev share from that stream as well. Now the pool tokens, yeah, they did change. So I know when we first met, they had a 10,000 token tranche and that sold out very, very quickly. And 5% of the global revenue is staked to those 10,000 pool token holders. Now what happened was I got sick with COVID <laughs> and while I was gone, Amanda, on my behalf, even, you know, threw it in there for me that, you know, that went really quickly and we would love, you know, perhaps the second issuance, how could we do that? Now, without diluting or changing the promise to the original pool token holders, Andreas, you know, ran the numbers and said, we can do another 10,000, you know, the second issuance is another 10,000 tokens. But instead of getting 5% of the global revenue to be distributed amongst those 10,000 token holders, it's 1.25 distributed. Plus the difference in the second tranche, the first tranche they seed from one 
to 40 over 12 months. So they will only seed for 12 months, but the revenue share is, you know, for the life of the platform. And then this second tranche only seeds from one to 10. So if you had a gold loot box, say, you know, that would, and you wanted to give one to your kids or you wanted to sell one, you would only have one left. So the reason it seeds is so that it can fractionalize and you can divvy up a little bit more of your holdings because they're going to be so massively valuable. You could even sell them, you know, there'll be an option for that down the road, but they'll only seed for the first 12 months, but they'll continue to pay out the revenue share. So the first tranche pays out 5% of the global revenue distributed amongst those 10,000 token holders. Mm -hmm. And then the second tranche, 1.25 of the global revenue. So let me give you an example. So Please, thank you, Shelly. Yeah. If you have a gold loot box now, say it's got two pool tokens. Over the course of 12 months, those two pool tokens will become 20 because remember, each one will seed an additional 10. So at the end of the year, you've got 20 pool tokens, right? Okay. Now, your 20 pool tokens, per million paying player, those pool tokens will earn you $1,800 in XRP in real time per annum for each, you know, million paying players that comes onto the platform. And, you know, when you get to the 10,000, you know, the, the platinum loot box, that's 23,000 worth of XRP paid out in real time per million paying players per annum. The diamond loot box, you've got 140 pool tokens, which will seed to 1,400. So that's 126,000 per million paying player per annum. So each token, if you divide it up, you know, what you have by the end of the year as it seeds is going to earn $90 per million paying player once we have them on the platform, obviously, yeah. <laughs> per annum. So that's the math there based on, you know, our current projections, which I think I'm so psyched that those are very conservative because looking at what is all coming together now, I just, I, I can't sleep. <laughs> This is crazy, Shelly. I'm actually yeah. very excited. I spent that 50 grand a couple months ago. Chad1222 has a question. He's all, can, yeah, me, me three. Can we redeem our NFTs yet? Is, is his question. He says, yeah. I have tried, but I don't know what the process is. So maybe for the people that bought a couple months ago that are very excited because they got pool tokens and this information that you just gave us is really making us feel like, hey, if this is successful, when it's successful, we could be in a lot better shape financially. Walk us through how we go out and buy these NFTs once we get the you know vouchers and things like that absolutely so the one thing we don't want to do is try to purchase them i mean you have your vouchers in your back office you don't want to try to do it through the app store a lot of the business side of stuff we kind of want to keep through the browser and the only reason is the app store will literally like rake us over the coals apple i think it's 30 percent, and google play takes about 40 percent of any transaction that happens on the app store so it's really difficult to even try to maneuver it on the app store anyway for that reason. But for whatever reason, I was trying to do it earlier for Robert and I couldn't get it to work on the computer. So I did send that into IT. You can, however, get it to work on the phone in the browser. So if you log into your Super One account, you don't have to do it through the app. Just go to Super One, put in your credentials, and then... <laughs> on the left hand side you're gonna or you're gonna have three dashes on the top you'll click the three dashes then you'll have your drop down menu okay, what me... you want to do is go to my wallet here let me see if i can do this in real time are you seeing my screen yeah. let, let me I just can. let me just try to do it let's see if it works so account i need to log in right all right but you're on your computer right i am oh it takes me right back into here though yeah it's gonna loop on the computer for some reason i think they the i need you on my phone time. Yeah, the last okay. update made it a little wonky on okay. the viewer. So you want to move. So when you go to my wallet, you're going to scroll down till you see NFTs. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have like little toggles between, you know, your bronze, your silver and your gold and so forth. You want to move one of the NFT vouchers into the viewer. And you know, it, it's kind oh, of funny, but you just like, okay. Them. And once it's in the viewer, you're going to go then to the out the, to the NFT marketplace. So you'll open that up, make sure you, it's just kind of funky right now with a little bit of the updates that are going on, which will probably be more as we get closer to launch, but you'll want to, you know, 
go through the NFTs. You might want to sort through sports or entertainment or, you know, music artists, however you want to sort it. I, I tend to put in what I'm looking for specifically, and then I use usually do top sold. And then you'll find the NFT that you want. Make sure that that specific T series is available. Some might be sold out in diamonds. Some might be sold out in bronze. You know, just make sure the one that you have in the viewer is available. And then you'll click on it to redeem. And then it's going to ask you again to confirm that you want to purchase it. And then it'll either say, do you want to go back to the the NFT marketplace or do you want to go, you know, back to your account? Got it. Okay, that's and great. Then you'll be that's able great. To see. Yeah, once it's once you've redeemed it, you'll be able to see it in your viewer on your when you go to my wallet. Okay. And guys, I know a lot of us have been here talking about this. If anyone has any questions for Shelly, she doesn't have all day. She has maybe maybe five five minutes, ten minutes left. If that, please type your questions in. Let's get them answered really quickly. But Shelly, I'm in I'm in the loot boxes right now, so I'm in I'm in a gold package. So what? So the the current gold package for a thousand dollars has two loot loot pool tokens, right? Is that what you said? The current yes. Current. The current. Oh, I think you broke up. And if oh the. Current- yeah, somebody just called me. The current loot boxes have two of each. So if you get a bronze, it's two bronze. If you get silver, it's two bronze and two silver. If you get a gold, it's two gold, two silver, two bronze. You know, if you get platinum, it's two platinum. You know, so yeah. that, the ones that we got early on were three of each. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy I bought when I did. I know, me too. <laughs> I got it around the same time as you. <laughs> hey, all right. Let me see if there's any questions, anyone typing, no. Is there anything else maybe that you could tell us in closing, unless someone types the question right now, anything else maybe that I didn't go over in that town hall or anything else going on maybe that's a value to the people listening right now? You know, I'm just thinking, you, I mean, you always do a great job. I, I'm thinking like, as far as the timing, I know a lot of people ask about when we're going to launch. We don't have a set day and time yet. People are asking when the IEO is, which, again, we don't have that. We're actually making them kind of duke it out as to who will be the first <laughs> to list because of these specific partnerships. We are you know, able to leverage a lot right now, and Warren's doing a phenomenal job because it is Binance, KuCoin, and Gate.io that are kind of competing. So normally you got to pay a lot to list and we're able to possibly leverage a partnership instead of having to pay for a listing. Wow. So that would be very, very, very good if we can pull that off as well. There's a lot of rabbits and hats all flying yeah. around at once yeah i it, yeah. it must because you have such a big team and all, every, it's it's a global operation at this point right yeah yeah i mean you got you got people everywhere really quickly so oh man just i want to go buy some more pool tokens right now so god nfts pool tokens let me just make sure i just went over all these questions for really quickly i think there was one question i had to go back to nope you, how do people buy nfts you solve that problem i don't think i have any other questions unless anyone in the audience wow you know it's funny, right? We're in a weird space in crypto right now. It's 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 a bear market. People don't know if the market's going to go back up or down. I personally think we're in kind of like a bull trap where we're going to have a readjustment with the housing market and all kinds of things, higher interest rates. The Fed's going to keep keep going. Yeah. And so, you know, do you want to put $1,000 in the DeFi market right now? Or do you want to put $1,000 into a loot box, get a couple NFTs, get some pool tokens where you actually, if this... If and when this is successful, you actually have a, a revenue generating passive income going for yourself, depending how big it gets, right? If it gets to a billion dollars, right, and you have Coca-Cola and FIFA and all these people advertising with you, it could get it could get out of control pretty quick, right? Yeah, I mean, just in the meeting we had this morning with a very, very well connected finance guy who's gonna handle some of this stuff. On the U.S. side with us, you know, Andreas was throwing some numbers around that I was like, okay, he's like, you know, we're targeting being a double digit, you know, billion dollar company and potentially looking for, you know, mergers and acquisitions down the road. And I was, whoa, (laughs) you know, and and he's he's not playing like the stuff that's going on just with Super Labs outside of Super One that he's going to tie into this app is just it just makes this roadmap just such a joy to be on because it's like nothing I've seen in this space. Incredible, incredible. Well, Shelly, I, I really appreciate you spending your time. I know you're a very busy lady. I don't know when you sleep, Shelly, because you're texting me. You know, <laughs> 11 my time is two in the morning your time and you're waking up at seven morning for calls. I, I We appreciate all the hard work. You know, if, you, if you're listening to this on replay, 
and you have not, this didn't make you bullish on Super One, I don't know what will. This is just phenomenal updates that are coming and this is right around the corner, guys. So, you know, it might be a good idea to, to, to do some more due diligence on this, right? It's never financial advice, but take some time. If you have more questions, send them to me. I'll send them to Shelly and get the answers straight from the team. I really appreciate your time, Shelly, and thank you so much. I'm gonna stick around for a couple more minutes in case anyone had some stuff they want me to go over, but I really appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Keep up the good work. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all for having me. And Robert, always a joy. Love your energy. Pleasure's Talk online. You. Thank you, Shelly. Thank Bye, you, Shelly. All right. Viking Steve, I see you typing. What's going on, Viking Steve? A new member. I'm so glad you're here, Viking Steve. And then Crypto Million. See, everyone wants to ask questions when you're leaving, Shelly. That's how it goes, huh? Of course. <laughs> Hold on. We'll get, let's give him a few seconds here. And then we'll, I know you got to call it three. And I, I, I want to give you some time in between those calls to do whatever you need to do. So Crypto Millions Hunter, type quickly. No, this is an exciting time. You know, I, there's not too many projects I'm, I'm excited about. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited about this. I feel the same way. I mean, I lost my ass in Wonderland and Luna. And I was just kind of like the wind taken out of my sails. And, you know, it took me a long while. It took me about eight months of, you know, taking this to some very trusted people to help me pull it apart, you know, because I was just like, I can't anymore. <laughs> like, I can't. Yeah. I can't take losses. You know, and if, if you don't know about Shelly's background, guys, she's been instrumental. I mean, she she built teams and crypto projects for a living. I mean, she's she's been around the space for many, many years. She knows she knows what's good and what's shit in the space. And she wouldn't be putting this much time and effort into into a project unless it was something that really stood out in her mind. So just, you know, take that as some information too, right? You know, these people are not spending every day working on this project for no reason. They see the potential and then they, they know things that we don't. So, you know, food for thought when it comes to that. But a Crypto Millions Hunter, I'll give you another second if you're still typing. I think he asked for having trouble finding the info contract info for Super One. It's not out yet. That's why you can't find the contract info, my friend. We'll give him one more question and then we'll, we'll let you go, Shelly. Thank you. Not a problem. I enjoy being here. This is exciting. I, I am. I like, let me know when it's time to pop bottles. I'll go buy a nice bottle of champagne. I'll put it in my fridge just for like, I'll wait for a text saying pop it or something. And I'll just be like, absolutely. Yep. Yes. I'll go, I'll go, I'll, I'll record it too. So everyone can laugh at me getting champagne all over myself. No problem. Just looking to get into the project. Crypto Millions Hunter. If you want to get into the project, guys, if you're watching at home, if you're like, you're just watching this on playback, I'll put in my link to, to join. You don't have to use it, but you know, anything that you do, I'm going to be spending money, more loot boxes for the team and uh, to give out to the community. But if you want to click on that, set up an account, you need to move XRP from your external wallet into the super one wallet. And then you use that to buy your loot boxes. And then you'll get your vouchers. Once you purchase that, you use your vouchers to go buy whatever NFTs you want. And then you, I would recommend getting pool tokens. You don't have to, but that's really when, if you want to participate in this 1.25% of, of global revenue, you're going to want those pool tokens, guys. That, that's your passive income, really. You know, the, the NFTs are one step of it, but the pool tokens are another step of it. And then staking is a third step of it. So there's three different ways here that you can make money unless I'm leaving out one or two options, but I think that's it, right? Shelly, three, three different ways, staking, NFTs and pool tokens. So the super token staking is also an amazing passive stream. Then you have the NFT bonus, which is staking your NFTs and then the ads. So that starts in the gold package as well. You get ad spaces, which is basically a digital billboard that the advertisers will purchase space from you. And then when the non-paying players need to watch advertising in order to participate in the jackpots, you're going to get paid as well as staking those. You are going to get a portion of that 5% pool that's taken from 5% of the advertising revenue is staked to the ad space holders. So you get real-time payments when people are watching your advertising, and then you also get a rev share. Everything is a rev share. It's like literally the best thing I've ever seen. So guys, four to five different ways for passive income with, with just one loot box. So Shelly, thank you so much. You have a fantastic day. I really appreciate your time. And I'll, I'm sure I'll be texting you soon with some other questions. <laughs> and I just appreciate how open you are with everything. So thank you. Absolutely. It's been great. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Everyone, take care. All right, guys. Well, hey, that was that was the session. I'm gonna pull up the if if you just came in, you want some more information on Super One. Let me pull up the interview I did with the founder, 
and he you know he explains a lot of it to do with the game and the mechanics behind the game a little bit more than what he went into detail in the town hall let me get that and i'll post it here for you give me one second but guys i mean you know put a thousand bucks in a DeFi project or buy a loot box i i, I mean personally it's it's a no-brainer for me but it, it's it's totally up to you what you do with your money but this is this is this is a real deal project that i'm you know i wanted to bring to you you know right now the DeFi market is shit i mean there's a lot more scams happening and and so you know it, it's totally up to you what you want to do but let me try to find this super one kryptonaires let me try to find it here god we create a lot of content if you haven't if you're not subscribed to our youtube channel please give me a thumbs up a subscription that'd be great we want to grow the channel we can't do it without your help any questions though guys anything else that you wanted to know about uh, this project in particular or anything else going on in crypto that you want to ask a question about please let me know I'd be happy to try to assist you in doing that. Hope you didn't see my conversation. Gold one is $1,000, platinum is 10K. Yeah, guys, so they're, they're, not, they're not cheap. But remember, you're getting, your, you're getting your pool tokens with gold and above, right? You're getting your NFTs, staking. You know, there's, there's four different, and advertising. Oh, Shelly's back. Hi, Shelly. I got your text. Did you need me back? No, 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 I'm sorry. That was, that was 10 hours ago. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. No, you're good, Shelly. We're good. We're just hanging out. I'm trying to find some stuff for these guys, but we're just we're just chatting. So thank you so much. Okay. You have a good call. You're good. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Uh, yeah, it's it's exciting times. Um, yes, yeah, Viking Steve. Thank you, man. I hope you're enjoying the community and the information we bring. We just don't want to shill you garbage. You know, this is a legitimate project. I mean, I don't know of another project with KPMGs. You know, auditing the, the whole company. So that does make me. Get, that makes me feel better about everything does it matter which nfts you get is it based on the popularity of the player i personally would buy popular nfts right because that's going to be the the number one there's there's nfts in there that you know there are people that i don't know not from my error not that they're not popular i just don't know who they are so you can sort by the nfts that have sold the most i wish i would have bought my nfts before i'm telling you what i'm about to go do but that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go by popularity and and try to buy the NFTs, guys. Doesn't matter. That sounds good to know. I know nothing about soccer. I you know it's not just soccer though, man. They're going they're going after. They're gonna go after soccer. Soccer is the easiest one, right? But they're gonna be going after the NBA, the NFL. But what she said was they went after the Indonesian a lot of Indonesian soccer clubs because there wasn't a level of entry to to, to negotiate with them. They wanted to do it just so they could you know put more eyes on their club. And so, you know, when the project launches, if it's highly successful, in which they think it's going to be, as you can see, all of these people think it's going to be the, you know, everything since sliced bread, you know, that is really when you're going to have, you know, the rubber meet the road as far as, you know, people using the platform and money coming in, right? So, you know, and that's when the NFL or NBA or any other, other, other big league, or it doesn't even have to be, it doesn't even have to be sports, guys. It could be, it could be a movie studio, right? Or it could be a, 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 a creator like The Rock or, you know, Brad Pitt or any of these people that want to make additional money, right? Stars are always about what's in it for me. I hate to be that person, but there's a small majority of stars that, that don't do it for the money. They do it because it's their passion, but there's a lot of people that do it for money. And so those are the people like those B-level stars, maybe C-level stars or and it's A-level stars that are going to be using this platform to not only make more money for themselves, but also get more notoriety out in the world, right? And then think about the advertisement, guys, right? If you're buying two gold pool tokens with your $1,000 NFT, and you're sharing now in the 1.25 of, of the what they they bring in globally right if they have you know advertising out there they're making you know 50 or 100 million dollars a year on advertising that's income coming in you're going to get paid on that anyway there's a lot here guys and so i'll leave you with it i'm not going to tell you what to do with your life but here's some information i hope it helps you i'm going to go check out now and i'm going to stop the recording